Okay, we did our first look into the A4H2. I know, I know what the chemical formula for water is, but hey, water vapor. Welcome to Machines and More. I didn't want to make that first review too long, and uh, I know some of you had asked for this one, so you know, let's take a look at a simple air cooling setup. And additionally, uh, in this follow-up, we'll also take a look at FE Ampere cards in the A4H2O, since uh, I anticipate that some of you might want to do either, or may maybe you're doing both. Uh, I mean, the, in this case, because hey, if there's a will, there's a way, right? For air cooling, this case, obviously, though, when the specs are so tilted in the favor of a 240 rad. In most cases, you really are better off just going that route, and uh, 55 millimeters is super thin territory. I grabbed the IS60 EVO, and you guys know I really like this heatsink because it comes with a 92 millimeter fan on the bottom and a slim 120 on top, but fan on top configuration is much too tall for this case. So I'm just gonna swap out the stock fan for the Noctua A9 by 14 fan underneath, which is gonna keep it at the roughly 50 millimeter height here. Of course, the point of this video isn't really to show you how amazing air cooling is in this case because physics being what it is and 55 millimeters being what it is, the point is more so to let you know what to expect and what to consider so you can plan an air cooled build accordingly. So whether it's a stock cooler like on your, you know, your stock AMD cooler or your uh, stock Intel coolers or an aftermarket cooler that's under 55 millimeters will give you some uh, considerations here and a little exercise where I show you just how important case fan choice is at the top. So with this little of a fan, we do have to be realistic about our CPU choice and it, you think you're gonna wanna shoot for around 65 watts if you do expect any kind of heavy multi-threaded load on your CPU. So this will include your 10400, your 12400 type of Intel SKUs, and also your 3600, your 5600X Ryzen SKUs. So I am switching to the 3600 for this next sequence of thermal testing. And because this type of little fan can emit a higher frequency noise at the higher RPMs, that is very unpleasant. I'm just gonna fix it at 50%, and it's actually tolerable at that point. And uh, some good case fans here will make a big difference here. So I did throw the Fantex T30s at the top since there's more than enough space for it to fit. And this should give you an idea of what to expect. Uh, these fans do go up to 3000 RPM in the advanced mode, but that's more for illustrative purposes. I really don't recommend running them this fast unless you absolutely have to and you have a good set of noise canceling uh, headphones. But as you can see, the case fan speeds do have a strong impact on the CPU temps. But since noise increases exponentially in many case fans past 1200 RPM, I think perhaps 1500 to 1600 RPM is as high as most would want to go for a heavy multi-core workload. Then again, if that's the common type of use case you have, then personally, I would be looking at a higher powered chip and just, you know, bite the bullet and pair with a 240 AIO. So yeah, the temps are okay, not great, but definitely usable. you will notice that I've locked the voltage here, and it's not a bad idea to do that so long as you can get at least the stock PBO boost clocks like I've done here. And um, I'm locking this at 4.3 gigahertz and 1.25 volts. With the Ryzen 5000, you can also set a negative offset and curve optimizer and a PPT limit, so that way you can get stock performance with more optimal voltages. What about for a lower CPU utilization scenario, but with a heavy GPU load, like for gaming? Well, with case fans at 1600 RPM, your CPU here is still at the same 4.3 gigahertz lock. The thermals are actually quite decent here and the performance is adequate. GPU is running at full power here without the CPU limiting it, and at least for Red Dead 2 at 1440p Ultra, it was really, really good. If we take a look at the temps with PBO, you'll notice some very different results. Cooler GPU, hotter CPU, and that's gonna be misleading. The GPU temps didn't all of a sudden become amazing. So let me explain. What's actually happening here is that at least with the stock 3600, it's only boosting to 4075 megahertz on all cores, which isn't unexpected with your smaller cooler here, but it's definitely not fast enough to allow the GPU to run free. So while you'd usually see around 335 watts of GPU power draw on this 3080, because we're CPU limited here, it's only coming in at 280 watts. So it's the utilization is not 100%, so it's much cooler here. With the 5600X and your Intel CPUs like this uh, 12400 here, it's not gonna be as much of an issue, but yeah, if you're noticing lower GPU utilization than you'd expect, meaning, you know, like you're, you're not playing Far Cry 6, 
then I definitely look into undervolting the CPU while keeping the stock boost clocks, at least on the Team Red side. Your stock PBO does tend to give chips a lot more voltage than they need just to give that margin of safety for stability. Now, speaking of Far Cry 6, my impression of, is that the game is pretty poorly optimized and it's pretty single core limited to begin with. So you'll see roughly the same lower GPU utilization with most CPUs and you know that thermals, uh, they, they are what they are. So right around 1200 or 1600 RPM is a good spot to max out your case fan curve, I think. Okay, FE Ampere cards, you have this big flow through section, which uh, this can be a problem if it's blocked out right because it's actually pushing the exhaust air through the top of the card. But one thing that actually really does help for SFF cases is that it's got this blower section here and that's really effective at getting rid of the waste heat because it exits out the case. And at least in a sandwich style case where the radiator is uh, exhausting, that can help lower the ambient case temperature and help the card perform better. From what I understand, the retail version of the A4H20 will include standoff extensions, which is awesome, so that the user can space out the riser cable and therefore the card, which is a good idea as long as it's a two-slot FE card that you have, which actually most of them except the 3090 FE, and that one's too thick to, to do this with. But uh, actually, I was pretty impressed by how well the card worked just with the stock riser cable. And there does seem to be an impact on the radiator resulting in higher CPU temps in that configuration. So uh, spacing out the card is still better on multiple fronts. And the result here, not only is the performance acceptable in this case, it's actually really, 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 really good for this card. And of course, the CPU temps, they're not nearly as good due to the radiator having to run an exhaust. But uh, next to what is best in class thermals NR200, it's giving better GPU temps here. So yeah, really impressive by this case. I wouldn't hesitate to run a two slot FE card in here. Just make sure you space out the riser cable and yeah, enjoy that performance. So hope that helps. Give a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for checking in.